the whole subject of white toe vocalization is fascinating. Hunters are intrigued by it, scientists want to study it, and certainly the hunter that understands what white tails are doing out there and how they're communicating with each other is going to have an advantage when it comes to deer hunting. I find that in over the year, I find over the years that I've raised white tails that the way that white tails communicate does to fawns, fawns to does, bucks to bucks, bucks to does is pretty incredible. And there are certain times of the year that white tails will actually communicate through vocalization more than at other times of the year. So obviously during the rut is one time that bucks are going to be quite vocal. Again, the testosterone is peaked and we're doing a lot of vocalization. When those fawns are born in the spring, there's a tremendous amount of vocalization going on between both does and fawns. And that's key because as the doe is trying to teach that fawn what to do, they do it through a number of ways. Scent is one way, but communication through vocalization is another. Now, does will do a fair amount of bleeding and grunting, but uh, probably not quite as much as most people think. Bucks, on the other hand, in fall, there's a lot of vocalization that comes from them. And the key to remember is every white-tailed buck is a little bit different. Not all white-tailed bucks are going to do the same kind of vocalizations. Uh, and so you're going to have a lot of grunting going on. You're even going to have some bucks doing some, some bleeding. And then you're going to have another type of vocalization that bucks will commonly do in the fall. And it's uh, some call manufacturers call it a, a growl. Uh, or some might call it a roar. And I know that a lot of wildlife photographers, myself included, for many, many years called that sound, the growl and the roar, we called it a beller. And, you know, I know that's kind of a popular term today that some of these call manufacturers have, but that call's been around for a long time. Matter of fact, Leonard Rue in the 50s was talking about that. Uh, just that not many people knew anything about deer calls or even thought about using deer calls back then. When you start talking about bucks to does, uh, you'll find that a doe, for, for example, when it gets near estrus, oftentimes will make a bleat sound. And it'll be fairly consistent. It might be one, two, three times. A buck hears that sound, and it'll gravitate to it, or it'll go to it because of the sound, because he knows there's a doe there. That's why using a deer call can be a, a very, very successful way of hunting whitetails. And also, when you start talking about during autumn months, if you're able to make a fawn bleat, that's another great buck call because when that fawn bleat is made, that buck knows that we've got does and fawns over there. So he'll come check it out. So there's a lot of ways that whitetails communicate. They do a great amount of uh, vocalization. Again, not every deer makes the same sound. An example, I've had over the years two whitetail bucks that I raised. Uh, they would do a lot of growling or roaring or bawling, whichever one of those three terms you want to use because as far as I'm concerned, they're one and the same. They do it, but none of the other bucks I ever raised would ever do it. And so they all have a different personality. They all have a little bit different way they vocalize. And it's kind of like people, if you will. Some people holler and some people don't. And some people talk a little bit different. Well, deer are the same way. They all have different personalities and they kind of communicate uh, within themselves, uh, within, the, within the whole herd uh, in that fashion. But I find bleats, grunts uh, are very, very common and that's the two calls that I would say hunters really want to know how to make. Now, from an aggressive standpoint, that roar, that growl, or that beller, again, whichever the three you want to call it, is a common call that some bucks make. But one sound that bucks make that's very aggressive, and they all seem to do it, is a wheeze, and sometimes they'll put a snort with it. And that's a very aggressive sound that a buck makes, and he's pretty much telling another buck, buddy, you better leave here, because if you don't leave here, I'm going to put a whooping on you. And if you can make that without swallowing your tongue, 
It's a great sound to make when you're trying to communicate with a white-tailed buck that you're trying to get close to your stand. <laughs> Another way that whitetails communicate is through body language, and they do this a great deal throughout the year, 365 days a year. One way they might do it is white-tailed bucks are always trying to set up a dominance order and they would do it through threat walking. In other words, you see them kind of posturing sideways, they're stiff-legged, their ears are pulled back, and they're pretty much saying one buck to another, I don't like your looks, you better get out of here because I'm the top dog here and I'm gonna whoop you. And so they just use that as a threat way. And they'll often do that even in the hot to trot rut, and that's usually the kind of behavior that takes place just before they come antler to antler with a vicious fight. So that's one way they do it. Another way they would do it, they'd walk up to a, another buck and they'd all bristle up, they'd pull their ears back, and they'd just kind of stare at each other, and they look at each other for a while, and they might roll their eyes back, and they're pretty much telling through body language that they want to be the, the dominant buck and hoping that the other buck would kind of move off or leave. So all of this body language has much to do with how these bucks set up their dominance. And I might also tell you, you find the same thing with does. They don't bristle up or anything like that, but those does will also do a threat walk, especially a doe, a mature doe, that's about ready to have a fawn. Late May, early June, almost fawning time, she's got her area all selected where she's going to have that fawn. And then a buck intrudes. Maybe it's her buck fawn that's now a yearling buck from the year before that has not dispersed yet she'll run them off. She'll pull her ears back and she'll come right after him in a very aggressive manner to push him off and might do the same thing with another doe. She wants to be left alone and so ears are pulled back and there'd be a lot of chasing going on. So there's a lot of body language that takes place within the whitetail population. And it's kind of like turkey hunting. When you know how to make those sounds, you've got the, uh, the ability to be able to call that animal close to your stand.